welcome all of you uh, on this video lecture series on 8051. So today we'll see the introduction about uh, 8051 microcontroller. So the basic component that is 8051 microcontroller has certain uh, peripherals inside it. So uh, it is actually a 8-bit microcontroller which is having 4 kilobytes of ROM memory. So basically the ROM memory is used for uh, storing the program or the code. Uh, and it is a, a permanent memory so once we store anything in that we cannot erase it so the capacity of rom present in 8051 is of 4 kilobytes then the next peripheral is ram so ram is generally used for storing the temporary data so it is also called as data memory so the capacity of ram present in 8051 is 128 bytes then the next peripheral is uh, the io ports so basically these IO ports are used for interfacing external peripherals or external devices to 8051. So there are typically four IO ports and each IO port is having eight pins. So total 32 pins are there uh, which are which can be used for interfacing external uh, devices or peripherals to 8051. Then next peripheral is a timer. So this timer uh, is a 16 bit timer and there are two such timers so this timer can be operated in two modes one is timer mode and the other one is counter mode so in timer mode the timer is generally used for um, generating delays that is time delays whereas in counter mode it is uh, generally used for counting the external clock pulses so this is the use of timer and counter so there are such two timers available in 8051 and both of the timers are of 16 bits so the uh, starting value can be 0000, 00, 00 hex to fff hex so that is the final value for a 16 bit timer then the next peripheral is a serial interface so using this serial interface we can transmit or receive the data serially uh, using 8051 so if i want to transmit anything to external device i can do it with the help of the serial port or if i want to receive some data from external peripheral that also can be done with the help of this serial port so these are the basic peripherals that are available in 8051 so this is the general block diagram of uh, 8051 in which we are having all these peripherals so starting with the cpu so here we have a cpu then we have uh, all the um, peripherals like ROM that is of 4 kilobytes uh, memory space. Then we have RAM which is of 128 bytes. So this pro uh, ROM is called as program memory or code memory whereas RAM is called as data memory and the capacity of that is 128 bytes. Then we have two timers that is timer 0 and timer 1 and we have we can use these timers as external as a uh, counters as well so in which the external clock pulses are given as input to this timers so those clock pulses can be given on the pins t0 and t1 t0 is for timer 0 t1 is for timer 1 and both of these timers are of 16 bits and these timers can be operated in different modes then next peripheral is the serial port so this serial port is used for transmitting or receiving the data serially. So as you can see here, there are two pins that is TXD and RXD. So in this, the TXD pin is used for transmitting the data serially from 8051 to the external device. Whereas this RXD pin is used for receiving the data serially from external device to 8051. Uh, then next peripheral is uh, the IO ports. So here we have four different IO ports available for 8051. In that again, um, uh, each port is of eight bits. So using these eight uh, bits or eight pins, we can interface external devices to 8051. So there are such four uh, IO ports available for 8051. And uh, out of these four ports, that is port zero and port two are multiplexed with address and data uh, bus of 8051 and port 3 is having some alternate functions so uh, whenever we are uh, using any of these ports we have to make sure that we are using that port for a particular reason or for a particular use so only one of the function can be assigned to that uh, uh, pin at a time then next is uh, the cpu so cpu is of 8 bits so uh, it can process 
or uh, it can perform operations on 8 bit data at a time then we have interrupt control so interrupts are generally used to stop or interrupt the cpu and uh, do some uh, extra work uh, by stopping the main program so whenever we have interfaced uh, any external peripheral that peripheral can interrupt the cpu and it can take service from cpu so there are different external interrupts available as well as internal interrupts available for 8051 then the next block is oscillator block so this oscillator block is used for generating the clock signal so a clock signal is required for any uh, sequential device okay uh, or in, in any controller we need a clock signal for its proper operation uh, then we also have a bus control this bus control is used for uh, generating the signals for sending data from one peripheral to another peripheral inside the 8051 itself so uh, this this is the block diagram of uh, 8051 uh, then the next is the internal architecture so this internal architecture is the detailed uh, blocks which are present in 8051 so as you can see here there are different blocks available like uh, we have ram uh, pay, uh, memory which is a temporary memory or it is also called as a data memory it is having a capacity of 128 bytes then we have different port latches so these latches are used to store the value uh, which is available on the port pins and these are the actual drivers so using these drivers we can interface the external peripherals then we have this rom memory so this rom memory is also called as program memory or code memory and the capacity of that is 4 kilobytes then we also have different resistors over here so the main thing is here again alu that is arithmetic and logic unit so this alu is used to perform different arithmetic and logical operations uh, in 8051 so um, this alu is again uh, giving output uh, uh, that output can be again um, identified from different flags so those flags are present in this resistor called as psw that stands for program status word then we have two general purpose resistors one is accumulator and the other one is b resistor so these resistors again can be used for some uh, arithmetic and logical operations then we have a stack pointer so again stack is a part of ram which is again used for storing uh, temporary data then we have some program address registers then buffers are there then we have another register called as uh, pc incrementer which increments the value present in program counter then this program counter is used to keep track of the program or which instruction is currently being executed so generally this program counter uh, stores the address of the rom memory and that address is the address of next instruction which is to be executed so uh, this program counter is of 16 bits so it can store a 16 bit address then we have next register as dptr that is also called as data pointer so whenever we are going to access the uh, memory data memory uh, or ram uh, using indirect addressing mode at that time we can use this uh, data pointer to point to the particular memory location and whenever we are going to access external ram at that time also we have to use this dptr that is a data pointer so similarly we also have here um, the other peripheral blocks like interrupt serial ports and timer blocks uh, then next we have port latches so uh, the remaining two ports are available over here along with the port drivers so these ports can also be used for interfacing external devices or peripherals to 8051 then we have a oscillator block so to this block we have to connect the external crystal and this block will generate a clock signal which will be given to the cpu then this is the timing and control uh, block which generates different waveforms required for uh, transmitting data from one place to another so this is the internal architecture of uh, 8051 then uh, the next one is uh, 8051 features so uh, 8051 is having one on chip clock oscillator so the job of this oscillator is to generate the clock signal required for the cpu then next we have uh, interrupts so uh, every controller is going to have uh, interrupts so uh, for 8051 we are having five interrupt sources so out of that two are external and three are internal so external uh, clock uh, interrupt signals are ext0 and ext1 so these are used for interrupting cpu uh, using an external device 
whereas we have three internal interrupts so these three internal interrupts out of that two are for uh, generated by the timer so whenever the timer overflows that is the value in the timer uh, reaches to the maximum value that is ff ff hex and if one more clock pulse is given the timer will roll back to the value 0000, 000, 000, 000 hex so whenever this situation occurs the timer generates an interrupt signal and that interrupt signal uh, is one of the uh, interrupt source for 8051 so since we have two timers there are two uh, timer interrupt uh, signals and the third one is the serial port interrupt so whenever 8 bit uh, data is received at that time an interrupt can be generated or whenever there is a transmission completed of 8 bits at that time an interrupt can be generated then we also have a reset signal so whenever we give a reset signal the cpu starts uh, executing the program from the starting address the 64 kilobytes of uh, external code memory can be interfaced to uh, 8051 this uh, code memory is used for storing the program or the code it is also called as ROM memory and it is a read only memory. Then uh, another 64 kilobytes of data memory can be uh, interfaced to 8051 externally. And this data memory is used for uh, reading or writing uh, temporary data in 8051. Then uh, the capacity of these both memories is 64 kilobytes because there are 16 address lines present in 8051. Uh, this code memory can be uh, selectable uh, by uh, EA bar pin which is available on 8051. This EA bar pin uh, when it is connected to ground it indicates that we are going to access the program stored from external ROM and whenever this EA bar pin is connected to VCC it means that we are going to access the program which is stored in the internal ROM. So this is the schematic pinout of uh, 8051. Uh, now in this, uh, uh, the pins are grouped according to their function. So uh, first we have here a port 0, uh, that is port 0, 0.0 to P0.7. So these pins can be used as uh, IO pins as well as these pins have another function as lower order address and data bus. Then next is the port 1. Uh, that is p1.0 to p1.7 so these uh, port pins are dedicated pins which are used for interfacing external peripherals to 8051 this pin is not having any other function other than io pins then next port is port 2 so this port is used for um, interfacing external peripherals as well as this port uh, is used as higher order address bus for interfacing external memory. Finally, we have port 3, uh, which is having alternate functions again. So, uh, P3.0 to P3.7. So, these pins can be used for uh, interfacing external peripherals as well as these pins are having another functions. So, uh, RxD pin is used for receiving the data serially from external device whereas txd is used for transmitting the data serially from cpu to the external device then the next two pins are int1 bar and int0 bar these two pins are used for uh, interfacing the external devices and using the external interrupts and interrupting the cpu so whenever any external device needs servicing from cpu those can generate interrupts on these two pins then next pins are T1 and T0. So as we know that the timer which is present in 8051 that can be operated in counter mode. So in this counter mode the external clock pulses uh, can be counted using the counter. So those external clock pulses can be connected either to T1 or to T0. T0 is for uh, timer 0, T1 is for timer 1. Then the remaining two pins that is RD bar and WR bar, these are read bar and write bar. So uh, these pins are used for uh, interfacing external RAM to 8051. So whenever we want to read anything from uh, external RAM at that time this RD bar pin is made low. And whenever we want to read uh, write anything to the external RAM memory at that time this write bar is made low. Then after that we have a reset pin. So this is an active high pin. So whenever we want to reset the CPU at that time this reset pin is made high. 
so whenever it is made high the cpu will be resetted and it will start executing the program from 00, 0 hex onwards then next pin is ea bar pin so this is uh, this decides the external access of uh, program memory so whenever this pin is zero uh, or it is connected to ground it means that we are going to access the external program memory and whenever this is connected to vcc it means that we are going to access the internal program memory the next pin is ale bar ale pin so this ale pin is called as address latch enable pin so it is used for uh, demultiplexing the address and data present on port 0 uh, pins of 8051 then next is psen bar so this pin is used whenever we want to read anything from external rom memory at that time this pin is made low then finally we have two pins xtl1 and xtl2 so these two pins are used to connect the external crystal so whenever a crystal is connected to these two pins a uh, clock is generated by the internal uh, block of clock oscillator so uh, this is about brief overview about the all the pins so in the next lecture we'll see the detailed use of all the pins available on 8051 thank you